Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to use the composition constraint to glue things to the bounds of your comp. Uh, this is really useful if you want to do lots of different resolution renders, and I'll show you how to do that too. Um, and this scene, I've got composition constraints set up on some text and a rectangle, and I can change the height of the composition, and you can see these elements are just sticking to the edge. Same thing, I can change the width, and they're sticking to the width. Um, yep, so uh, that's the that's the aim, and I'll it's really simple, so I'll show you how to do it. So we'll go into a new scene. I'm going to create a background shape, and on the background shape, I'll go to the Fill tab. I'll select the fill color, and then I'm going to click on a color in the library to assign that color to the selected attribute. And then I'll make some text. So uh, the text I'll make, I'll just draw a nice big box, um, and I'll type... Uh, oh, um, we'll make this larger, like so. And then something I just want you to notice is that the pivot point is at the top left-hand corner of the text box, right? That's going to come. That's going to be important in a second. Um, let's let's give this a color. We'll give it blue. And then to add the composition constraint, super simple. I'll show you how to do it um, automatically, and then I'll show you the manual way. So with the text shape selected, we're going to go up to the animation menu, constraints, and then we're going to pick comp constraint from here. And by default, the comp constraint is set to the exact middle of the composition. So that's 50% of the width and 50% of the height, as you can see on these sliders here. And then the other option we have in here is you can make offset in X and Y as well. So let's put the text at the top left-hand corner of the comp. We can add some uh, fixed pixel padding if we want to. Um, uh, but I'll just leave uh, leave that as is. But now, when we change the comp size, we're, um, we've got the text stuck to the top left-hand corner. Okay, like so. Okay, cool. Uh, right, now I'm going to show you how to do that setup manually. So we'll just create a rectangle um, again, just for consistency. I'll give it the same blue. And then um, I think in the example, I had a complex um, corner rounding. So I'll just... Do that and make this slightly larger so that we've got um, yep so that's the shape whatever and then let's um, let's take this uh, rectangle and we'll do the we'll add the comp constraint manually so I'm going to go into the um, element window and I'm going to type in a comp constraint so comp C uh, you don't need to put spaces in the words that you type in here in fact you can even miss out letters so uh, I'm going to type in the first um, and I'll type in ain't so I've got uh, comp constraint, even though I missed out most of the middle of the word. We kind of, we allow you to skip letters if you want to. Um, that's not important, <laughs> but still. Um, so I can add that comp constraint, uh, but it's not connected to anything at the moment. So to connect it to something, what you need to do is drag the output. So you can drag the output from the header over here, or you can drag the output from the um, project window here. And you just need to drag that into the position of something. And then you can set the... Um, set the uh, constraint to be um, 100% and 100%, which is the bottom right-hand corner. So 100% of the width and 100% of the height. And then uh, because the pivot point on the rectangle is in the middle, uh, so I'll show you where the pivot point is. You can see it down here. And what we can do is we can either move that pivot point, so we can move it uh, either by double-clicking on... Um, uh, double clicking and moving it in the viewport or we can uh, move it in the attribute editor like so and we can just bring it back in like that uh, or we could do it with the offset if we wanted to do it with the offset on the comp constraints there's many ways to do this okay so uh, now we have um, this setup uh, let's say that we wanted to have multiple renders uh, spit out uh, with different um, different resolutions um, and so I'm going to make a value to value to array. So this is simply a list, an array of um, numbers with X and Y uh, sub attributes. So in the first box here, we'll put our first resolution, which would be 1920 by 1080. And then in the second box, let's just make up a resolution. So we'll go 1920 and say that the resolution is 640 or something like that. Um, and then uh, we're going to connect this to the resolution of our composition. So we'll open our comp settings, and then I'm, I need to make this window permanent so that I can make a connection into it. Watch what happens when I try to drag a connection from the value array. That window disappears. So I need to make that window permanent so that I can drag something into it. You can do that by either clicking the button in the top left, or you can grab the title and just give it a wiggle, and then that um, the, the title bar, and then give it a wiggle, and that'll turn it into a, a permanent window as well. Um, and then uh, you can drag the value uh, to array output into resolution, 
So that's now connected. Um, I'm going to close the comp settings and if I uncheck auto index on here and put an array index of one in, you'll see that we are now using this first value, this, um, well, it's the second value, but it's the first index uh, as the as the resolution. So I can hit zero or one. Okay, great stuff. So let's say I want to render this out. So this is going to use dynamic rendering. I've already demoed this in another video, so I'll go over it very quickly. But if you go over to the dynamic rendering tab and you enable dynamic render, and then um, let's say we want two renders because we have two resolutions at the moment. So I want two renders. The dynamic, the, the dynamic index is the render number, but we start at zero. So let's take that index and we're gonna plug it into the array index here. And then if I go over to output, I'll name this um, uh, uh, comp res test, and I'll do a custom frame range of zero to zero, just so that I get one frame out and I'm just gonna hit render queue. Um, so if I go into the find now, uh, go into the desktop, tutorials folder and then in my renders um, we have uh, two renders in here we have a comp res test zero uh, dot zero 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 and then a one as well so those my two renders have come out to the different resolutions so the um, those are our two dynamic renders um, okay and that is basically how you can use the um, the uh, dynamic rendering with the uh, comp constraints to spit out uh, renders at different resolutions I hope you find that useful